Hello, everyone. I would like to thank everybody for showing interest in this idea and giving me the opportunity to present it. My name is Megha. I'm working as a consulting engineer from past three years in Cisco, where we provide the support to develop the simulated networks to find out the vulnerabilities, majors, and analyze the network matrix to resolve the customer issues. Today, I'm going to present the network health prediction using machine learning and small demo with it. I would like to start with the evolution of network. It all begins with the legacy systems, where it has old methods and technologies to handle applications, data. It was too slow in performance as well. To overcome this problem, we start developing other networking tools and systems to increase the performance and make the network faster and stronger. After that, we start monitoring this network and stabilize the performance using more smart tools, more automation, more networking. Now the question comes, what next? The new developing technologies, or you can say the cognitive technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, these technologies prove to be most important because this makes the product and services smarter and hence more valuable. It also gives you the capacity to analyze the network and take the decisions accordingly to make the network stable and better. Then wait, what is exactly the network analytics? We have a lot of data coming from the network devices on daily basis. We analyze those data and we convert those analyzed data into the actionable insights. By giving the deeper insights about how network is performing or how organization is using that network, we are improve the performance, reliability, or security of the network. Machine learning is a vital tool, or you can say it's very important technologies in the network analytics. It gives the system to ability to learn automatically and improve your experience through the examples that we provided. It focuses on the computer development program that access the data and use it to learn by themselves. This learning process starts with few observations, data, uh, such as few experiments or direct instructions, in order to find a pattern in, in data and make the better decision in future based on the examples that we provide. The main aim is to allow the machine to learn automatically without human intervention and makes the better decisions. In short, the machine learning works on three stages, training, testing, and tuning learn or test the data according to the input that we have provided, build the model on it, and test this pre-built model on the testing data to check the accuracy. Tune or adjust the data to get a high accuracy so that we can predict better results in future. I have used this technology to predict the network vital matrix like CPU utilization, memory consumptions, system temperature, use space, and a lot more using the Splunk analytics tool. It's like machine learning is bringing the network analytics into the new era, and Splunk is allowed to harness the power of machine learning. It consumes the data from various sources like uh, web services, the sensors, the data coming from the other network devices, and a lot more, any type of data that created by users. It serves the purpose of IT infrastructure by analyzing this data and logs generated by various processes using proper data modeling. And last but not the least, it converts those analyzed data into actionable insights by giving various kinds of visualizations. 
the Spunk also provides you the very good technology or you can say very good tool like machine learning toolkit. It's like you can create and operationalize your own machine learning model using that toolkit. It also provides you the interactive examples and works through the whole process for various use cases like IT, security, business, IoT, and a lot more. It also gives you the facility to choose your assistant as per your machine learning model. It's just select your data sets, select the algorithm which best suits to your data, select the value which you want to predict and the other correlated fields on which the predictor value depends on. After all this, just fit the model, compare the actual results with the predictor one and check the accuracy of it. After all this, you are ready to deploy this on the customer network as a schedule alert. It also provides you the 25 Python algorithms and more than 300 Python libraries to work on the machine learning model. If this is not enough for you, this, then you can import the external algorithms using SPL APIs as well. Splunk toolkits or machine learning toolkit not only provide you the support for the UI, but it also gives you the access to the underlying Splunk queries to use it in your future development. I have used this kind of power of machine learning toolkit and I ingest the raw data and response coming from the network devices on daily basis. We clean the data and make it amenable to machine learning. It contains to arrange the data in proper column format, remove the unwanted data, and or refactor the data as per our need of problem. Apply the machine learning algorithm on it, just based on your requirement and your data. It's most important thing to get the expected output. I would like you to uh, go through the use case that I have created for this project to get a clear idea of it. Let's go for the demo. So here I'm predicting the fields for temperature of the system which based on the various parameters like CPU storage temperature, memory, RAM usage, used memory, and used space by application. There are many other fields that on, the, on which system temperature depends, but I would like to highlight few of those. Here you can see I have used the training data sets in which I have provided those correlated fields and the main fields for system temperature on which I would like to predict the value. Here, I'm using the algorithm as linear regression and giving the model name as a temperature term. Selecting the algorithm is a bit hard because it totally depends on your data and your problem statement, like actually what you want from this algorithm and how the data is there in your system or in your problem statement. So here you can see after fitting this algorithm and this model to the training data set, I'm getting the value as predicted system temperature and the residual part. Basically this residual part is the difference between actual system temperature and the predicted one. And this predicted system temperature is depends on all these correlated fields like CPU storage temperature, memory, used memory, RAM usage, and used space by application. To observe the accuracy of the results, we have various visualizations. Like as you can see, I'm giving the line chart visualization, which is basically predicting the actual versus the predicted system temperature. As you can see here, the blue line indicates the system temperature, which we are providing in the training data sets. And here, According to the algorithms and model we have selected, we are getting the predicted system temperature. If the line matches, then it's the better algorithm, it, like it suits our data. Here we are giving the scatter chart, as it shows how much scatter your values, your predicted values from the actual one. As you can see, is highly scattered at high A. 
And from the residual line chart, it's showing basically the difference between the system temperature and the predicted system temperature. Better results shows the minimum difference between the residual part. Here I can show you the histogram as well. As you can see, the more deviation is there on the residual part. The zero error seems to be the better visualization. From this all visualization, you came to know that this algorithm is not proper for our kind of data and our kind of prediction. So let's try some other different algorithm. I have used the other algorithm as random forest regressor, and I'm giving the model name as system temperature demo. Here, let's see what are the results. I'm getting the same predictor system temperature column here, but the main difference is the residual part. As you can see, the residual part is more tense to the zero value. From the visualization, you can see that the actual and the predictor results seems to be more correlated with each other. You can even get a better idea from the scatter charts as well as is less diverse from the actual results. The residual line charts also shows the results like the less difference between the true volume and the predictor one, and so as the residual histogram because it stains to zero. As you know now, this algorithm is best suits for our data. We are proceeding with the testing this data set. I took the same parameters like CPU storage temperature, memory, used memory, RAM usage, and used space by application, except the one field, which is system temperature. Because I'm going to predict the system temperature on this testing data. Here I have used that result. As you can see, I'm getting the predictor system temperature based on the accuracy of our algorithm. This is one of the use cases that I have showed to you for this project, but we, we can do it for other use cases like CP utilization, memory consumptions, and using this kind of prediction model, it will be helpful for us to create the alerts of this thing using this tab. As you can see here, we can create the alerts for the predicted value in the customer environment. So it's easy to evaluate the root cause of the problem and it's easy to resolve the problem. So it's one of the use case that I have showed to you, but there are a lot more you can explore and you can build the custom model for it. It's like wide area of development because it has its own use cases and its own advantages. As you can see, it detects the incidents and preempts the unplanned network failures to help the customer to achieve the greater availability. It also reduces the resolution time by identifying the kind of events and network conditions proactively. It also reduces the cost by predicting and preventing the unplanned outages on the business. And overall, it increases the business growth. And by increasing the customer satisfaction, reliability, which results into the business growth. If you have any queries, then please reach out to me. Till then, happy developing. Thank you.